Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today, we're doing part two of how to save money acquiring wood. And it's my favorite topic today, found wood. So stick around and let me tell you some of the secrets that I use in acquiring wood. I'm always looking for wood. Now that doesn't mean I'm actively looking for wood, but you know, here I am on the topic of found wood and uh, somebody calls me up and says, we've got some cabinets we're taking out. They had to cut them out. They couldn't uh, lift them out. And do you want the wood from? And I said, sure, I'll have a look at it. The worst case scenario is I'll throw it out because that's what they were going to do was throw it out. But look at the doors alone, those, that's three quarter inch plywood, good grade plywood. So I really got a good find on this one, but not all of these uh, finds that I get are good. Sometimes you end up with some garbage and that's just part of what you have to deal with. The topic today is found wood and what I mean by found wood, sometimes when I'm out uh, I stumble across a source of wood and sometimes when I'm out looking for wood I'll find some other wood along the way. So found wood is kind of the wood that you're not necessarily looking for uh, but you find along the way. So let's go through the list of things that I do where I find a lot of sources of wood. Now before we jump into the lumber sources, I want to talk about this for a second. Sometimes you'll be in situations where you don't know whether you should be paying for the lumber or not. And my rule of thumb is if you don't know, always ask. And my line is this, did you have a nominal price in mind for that lumber? And that tells them that I'm willing to pay some kind of a small fee and they can make up whatever price it is that they want and then you can decide whether you want to do it or not. But the other thing that works extraordinarily well for me is I always have one of these, this is a little coffee card, it happens to be Starbucks, but I have a little coffee card with me. I get the gal to write the number on it so we all know what it's worth and I will hand this to them if I think that they're going to be a source for me to come back in the future or that this is a way of paying for some lumber, I will hand this to them and say, why don't you take somebody out for coffee someday? And you would be surprised how well this works because I get people that I go back to and they might not remember my name, but they always remember that I was the one who gave them the coffee card. So they're much more receptive in the future. So we actually build a relationship with somebody for sourcing lumber for the future. So it's a, a great little thing to try. Now one of the best sources of wood for free wood is just if you're out in a vehicle and you're driving around sometimes you come across people that leave stuff on the side of the road. It's a terrible thing to do uh, and it means other people have to pick it up but you know what uh, sometimes there's some value in there. Now here's, here's something that I saw on the side of the road and oddly enough it was when I was on my way to pick this up so I didn't have any room for it uh, but I would have stopped and picked it up because it was a, a plywood desk or something um, and there would have been, it looked like big sheets of plywood. Um, when I went by later somebody else had already picked it up so somebody else got a supply of plywood. So one of the good sources that I have from time to time is thrift stores. Uh, and not every thrift store is good. They need to sell some kind of furniture. And check this out. This one that I was in not long ago, look at this gorgeous little coffee table. Look at the wood in that. Isn't that $9? You couldn't buy that wood for $9. You know, a perfect little source for making little jewelry boxes or something. Then there was this table off to the side, this great big desk. Uh, there was some plywood. There was some natural wood in there. I think there was some walnut in there. Um, I didn't stop to take a good look at what the woods were, but um, look at that, $14. You couldn't buy the wood for that. You know, what a good source for repurposing something. Um, just something as simple as thrift stores. But look, you can go even further all over, uh, all over North America and, and many places all over the world. There are recycling yards where people bring stuff for free and drop it off so that other people can use it for something. And you know sometimes people can reuse desks or reuse cupboards but if they can't sometimes those things sit around for a long time. There's a great other source of wood. 
Now another source that I use frequently is a, a, a used building supply or a used supply store. Uh, Habitat for Humanity, I'm a big fan of what they do. I try whenever I can to donate back to them, so I'll buy things from them. I also donate wood to them from time to time um, so that we kind of keep things rolling. And you know, they've got all sorts of things and there's stores all over the place. You can buy wood, they've got doors, um, sheet good, there's all sorts of little um, tool parts and knobs and hinges, things like that. Uh, I buy so much from the, the Habitat for Humanity store, um, I must be one of their better customers because I'm in there all the time. You know, there's lots of different places where you can sell used things online, <laughs> and I use those from time to time, and Craigslist is just one of them. Uh, I will go into Craigslist, I look up uh, garage sales, I look up flea markets, I look up all sorts of things like that, uh, but one of the key words that I look up is lumber, and I'll, I'll do a whole scan on lumber and see what there is there. Uh, and where I live, it's amazing how much lumber comes up there. Sometimes there's a cost to it. Sometimes people are just willing to get rid of it. Uh, but you have to be careful what you buy or what you get from free because you can be getting some garbage if you're not careful. So let's have a look at some of the things that you can get that might be listed on Craigslist uh, that you might be going to look at. There might be some offers on. You will find everything conceivably possible uh, when you're buying any kind of used lumber on internet sites. Everything from used fences, uh, and sometimes there's uh, some good buys there, um, but you will find people selling uh, used construction. Uh, sometimes it's been wet, maybe for years. Uh, there may be some rot in it, maybe a lot of rot in it. There may be infestations of worms. Um, you need to be very careful what you're buying uh, when you're buying lumber that's been stored outside. Once in a while, you'll find people that are selling hardwoods that they've uh, imported from somewhere. So there's, there's lots of good stuff, uh, but there's also some stuff you need to be wary of. So just be aware of that. A lot of us purchase our lumber from hardware stores and wood stores, and those are really good sources. But you know, even they have places where you can get some deals sometimes. You know, often these places have what I call a boneyard where there's materials that for some reason got returned or they fell off a truck or who knows what. Uh, and they just kind of shuffle that stuff off in the corner and deal with it later. And if you keep your eye open uh, and sort of look around the backyard, the back lot, you never know what you might find. Some little bits of lumber uh, piled up somewhere. Maybe there's some pieces in a shopping cart. You just never know. But if there's the kind of lumber there that you could use, you might get some deals. So just keep your eye open for those. Well, that concludes my video for today, and I need to get breaking these down so I can store them. But I hope that gave you a few tips of what you can do to be always looking for lumber, always look for what you can find for deals, uh, for keeping lumber from going to the landfill, uh, and for repurposing as much as we can. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.